Storyline Radio Network. I'm Eric Thomas. Great to have you aboard. We have followed the career path of young Robert Wickens as he blazes a trail to Formula One. Hopefully the first driver from Jacques Gilman to do that with his Renault 3.5 championship this year. And his relief work in test in uh, Renault F1 equipment. Rob's been on the show detailing that right from day one. But out of Winnipeg in CJOB coverage along the network, another able-bodied Canadian is also applying his open-wheel trade in Europe in the Italian Formula Renault Wars with an invite to test in F3, a direct path to the World Driving Championship Automobiles. On the TSO Talent Watch, let's meet David Rickard on Raceline Radio. With a guy who grew up uh, in the in the motorsport game in and around Winnipeg in the Gimli area, uh, there's all kinds of different varieties of motorsport to pull you. Was it always open wheel formula for you? Was there any pull towards stock car racing or any kind of other pursuit in this game, or was it always kind of the open wheel thing? For me, my life was open wheel racing. You know, I grew up on a farm uh, just south of Winnipeg, and so, you know, you think being a farm kid, I'd always have my head under the hood of a car and know things about vehicles, but <laughs> yeah. for me, I could have cared less about that kind of stuff. Really? Uh, until I was 20, I turned on the TV and I saw a Formula One race on TV. And uh, then I had a chance to go to Indianapolis and watch the United States Grand Prix. And it was there on the upper deck, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I looked down at the cars going by. And I thought, you know what? It'll be a heck of a lot more fun to be down on those cars driving <laughs> than up in the stands watching. Yeah. Plus, everyone told me a kid from, from Winnipeg couldn't succeed in auto racing. It's just not in our in our blood. Or, oh, really? But, so I thought, all right, well, let's just give it a shot and see what happens. Oh, so, yeah, my, my yeah. passion is, is open wheel single seater racing. So, yeah, so those guys who said nobody from Winnipeg could do this, you said, I'm going to show you, right? <laughs> exactly, it's all the motivation you need. Yeah. David Rickert is uh, with us on, on Raceline Radio. Eight years ago, as you say, you were racing go karts in and around Gimli. How did you manage to advance, uh, to advance rather, so fast, Dave, that you wound up not only in an Italian Formula Renault car for Team Torino Motorsports, but an invitation to test? at F3 car with Team Ginzani for Pian Carlo. How did, that seems to me like a, an absolute rocket to the to the top echelons of this thing in a remarkably short period of time. Well, I had to move extremely fast, you know, because I only started racing when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20 in that yeah. area. Yeah. You know, I knew that, you know, to be a, a young guy is an advantage to get picked up and, and advance quickly. So for me, I had to take some fast steps and I did one, you know, I did two years of go-karting yeah. and that fall already, I was out at a racing school, finished that up, made that transition into cars, and then tried to just go as quickly as I could. So, sure, you hit the, the same blocks of funding that are issues for everyone, and fortunately I've had some good help to try and alleviate some of those, and now it's put me in a position where I really get a chance to live something that I thought would only be uh, a dream to me. So it's, it's quite an exciting opportunity. Yeah, and we follow other Canadians who have done the European thing. You know, certainly Robert Wickens comes to mind and what he's, he's trying to do. But for a kid who, you know, from around Niverville and, and Gimli, was it a bit of a culture shock to all of a sudden immerse yourself into the sport in, in Europe? Now? Like, how's your Italian? I mean, how did you get around that? Uh, you buy a good book that has <laughs> Italian phrases in it. Uh, but other than that, no, I mean, it's, I've had a chance to travel around a little bit, and I drove for Volkswagen a bit throughout North America. So right. I, got, you know, I got used to just meeting different people and going to different places, but obviously Italy is... Uh, is a different uh, ballpark altogether. I went to Germany a few times with Volkswagen as well. So I just I absolutely love the culture. And the big thing that ties us all together is we have a passion for racing. And if you want to drive race or play hockey at the highest level, you come here to Canada. If you want to drive race cars at the highest level, you got to get yourself over to Europe. Yeah. So just to be there, to be a part of things uh, is fantastic. And I'm just trying to soak in as much as I can, uh, enjoy the experience, but also learn and make myself a better driver. And the, the test of Autodromo, uh, Enzo Dino, Ferrari, and Imola, Italy. I mean, how prestigious and head spinning is that? <laughs> oh, that's exactly it. And I had a chance to to do a race there in the Renault Series earlier this year. You know, I just said the word Senna to one guy, and he points down the road, and I walk through, and just kind of the branches part, and all of a sudden there's there's the Senna Memorial, all with wow. fresh fresh flowers and Brazilian flags, and you just start to realize, wow, I'm, you know, I'm where history has. has taken place in as many years in, in Formula One, so yeah. it's uh, it's very special to be there and be racing on a track like that. And you mentioned the names too, when you think of the people that have come out of F3, you know, Air Senna, you mentioned them, Michael Schumacher, Mika Hakkinen. Yeah, it's a fantastic category of racing. I mean, if you want to prove yourself on the track, it's a fantastic place to be. Plus, off the track, uh, it helps in a big way in the sense that I think in the Italian Formula, Formula 3 championship, if you win or finish as a top rookie, they give you a test in a Ferrari Formula right. 1 car. Right. So, you know, just as, uh, as Robbie Wickens got a chance there to drive the, the Renault, um, so too do you get this opportunity now in Ferrari, and, and that's, I mean, that's the pinnacle level of, of all motorsports, to be in a Ferrari Formula One car. So 
that bodes really well off the racetrack that, you know, even win or lose, that gives me a year of, of saying that's my goal and what I'm working towards. Helps build my brand and my profile and hopefully helps me keep things going into the future. And from Formula 3, you can go absolutely anywhere, whether it's Formula 1, IndyCar, Le Mans, uh, it, it opens up the doors to you. So it's a fantastic learning experience. Is, is it the F1 thing you're definitely pointed at, or is your mind open to maybe, you know, coming back to North America eventually and trying the IndyCar thing, Dave? My mind is always open. I'm going to go wherever I can possibly go to uh, essentially put food on my table by driving race cars. Okay. But, yeah, as I mentioned, my passion is Formula One. And the fact that it is absolutely so unrealistic and impossible uh, makes me so desperately want to try and prove that it is possible and it can be done. Uh, and I know that, you know, we like to say that it's all what you do on the racetrack, but the reality is, especially in the politics of Formula One, it all comes down to what really happens off the racetrack. That's right. That's right. Uh, just the reality of the business that we're in. So just because I'm a little bit older, I'm, I'm a little bit taller, I'm from Manitoba, everything's stacked up against me. If I, if I walked on there and knocked on a door with 10 million euros in my pocket, yeah. uh, I might be able to get a seat. So uh, possibility is still very realistic. It's that it's that drive to, to sort of say, okay, I'll show you and try and get there. And if you've got the drive and if you want it bad enough, you'll get there, right? That's exactly it. You know, it's just putting in a lot of time and a lot of effort making sure you're smart about what you do on the racetrack and then and cutting and extremely smart about how you're handling yourself off the racetrack. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't have, you know, I'm very, very supportive parents, but they don't have a million dollars that they're going to give me to go drive race cars. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't won the lottery yet. So mm. just putting together the business around what you're doing and uh, trying to make things work that way. So one's put in front of the other and we'll see what happens. Listen, Dave, this is a tremendous story. And I'm really glad that somebody sent me the release on this because as, as you uh, probably know, in the 19-year history of this program, we have made it part of our mandate on Raceline Radio across Canada to chart and follow young up-and-coming uh, development drivers with our TSO talent watch, and you certainly fall into that. The very, very best of luck with this. Let's connect again right after the test and uh, in the new year, and we'll do something else and find out what's happening. And I uh, want to keep track of you and chart your career, David, because it's a great story. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. Winnipeg's Dave Rickard on Raceline Radio. He's already getting a snip at F3 with F1 and IndyCar on the radar. A great study on the TSO talent watch. We need another pit stop, and then we're going to regroup to open the TSO Raceline email bag. Run the round of the contest to win the watch. We're down to the last few plays of the season. Then Dale Earnhardt Jr. returns. This is the Raceline Radio Network. It's Dale Earnhardt Jr., and you're listening to Raceline Radio.